Well, Northeast Ohio has come a long way since a 1969 riverfront fire on the Cuyahoga River. Question, how did the river spark a national question? Question, how is the river positioned right now for Cleveland's future? The day began routinely, high temperature 73 degrees, Sunday, June 22nd, 1969. Dissecting Cleveland, the Cuyahoga River was making its inevitable push toward Lake Erie, slow moving water, but that day much more was in the river flow, which would thrust Cleveland into a horrible spotlight. Heavy pollution had spewed from the industrial valley into the river's flow. Overhead was a train crossing a trussle spanning the river. The industry spewed oil slick was larger than a football field. The sparks dropping from the locomotive ignited the slick and created a fire. Cleveland firefighters were called. When they arrived, it was then accelerating up onto the trestle and caught the trestle of fire. At the Western Reserve Fire Museum, Paul Nelson shows the fire battalion's chief log of the incident. A witness to the fire was former WKYC Channel 3 news reporter Joe Mossbrook, who covered the fire. Mossbrook knew of many fires over the years, but on this day... There was some damage to the trestle. It wasn't destroyed by any means. It was just a small fire. But the small fire led to a big event. Fifty years later, the Cleveland firefighter boat used that 1969 day is operational. Joe remembers the next day when Mayor Carl Stokes complained about a polluted Cuyahoga River. The mayor wanted to know what the state was doing about regulating the plants that were spewing their bad stuff into the river. Several weeks later, a national news magazine published the story, but used photographs from earlier, bigger blazes. Cleveland was called a disaster. But something good eventually came because the burn on the river ignited a revolution. Because of the Time Magazine uh, article that was out, uh, but they, I think the nation really saw us as the, the guide stone for, uh, for how we really needed to look at the environmental cleanup of the entire nation. This gave birth to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency the Clean Water Act of 1972, and a national consciousness on protecting the environment. The Cuyahoga has long been a working river. Heavy manufacturing exists on this waterway. So too does recreational uses. But question, can the two, heavy manufacturing and recreation, coexist on the same waterway? In other words, can both flow in the same direction? <laughs> Yes, heavy riverbank manufacturing is still here, but cleaner. Heavy-fisted freighters still muscle up and down the Cuyahoga, but the water is clean enough for recreational use. But they, they just have to understand that they are on a working river, yeah. and the, uh, the freighters have to understand that there are boaters around them. The Ohio EPA has judged the Cuyahoga River clean enough for consumption of its fish. Fifty years after the river burn, Cleveland commemorates the fire. No celebration of the fire, but remembrance of the spark it gave to a national environmental movement which grew out of the day Cleveland's Cuyahoga River caught fire. Leon Bibb, Channel 3 News. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Betsy, we've come a long, long way in the half century since that river right over there mm -hmm. caught fire. A long, long way. And it's not perfect, but mm -hmm. we have made so many strides. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's interesting. I think a lot of people don't realize that it was the Cuyahoga River fire that yeah. spurred the initiation, the creation of the EPA, yeah. which is now saving rivers all over the country. If there is a ground zero, if we can use that term, it is Cleveland. Yep. But we've progressed.